Welcome back to another episode of the Surly Talks Warriors podcast, proudly brought to you by the legends at Ortex. Today I'm joined by one of the most requested players to get on the show, Warrior number 209, one of the greats, Jazz Tavanga. Jazz, cheers for jumping on, bro. How you going, brother? All good. Let's start with where it all began for you. Can you tell us a bit about your upbringing, bro? And did you always play rugby league growing up? Yeah, I, I, I was born in uh, Christchurch and I started my footy career on um, Burnham Chevaliers. Um, I was there with Cody Nakarima and Jaden Nakarima. Uh, my parents sort of grew up together. So, and I moved from there to Palmerston North and then um, ended up in Auckland, Papakura. I spent most of my childhood there um, playing for the Papakura Seagulls. I mean, and were you always in rep teams growing up? And how did you first get noticed by the Warriors, bro? Um, I sort of didn't start making rep teams till I was in high school. Um, I didn't make many rep teams when I was younger, bro. And um, yeah, our, our team was pretty shit, eh? <laughs> we were always sort of getting smoked from like Mangare East and that. Um, and I first, I first uh, went to the, I went to an open trial in the Warriors uh, under twenties open trial um, when I was um, when I just finished high school. They had nothing going. So I was just trying to make it through um, secondary schools, nationals. Yep. That was like the big tourney for all the all the league boys. And I went to the tourney. I thought I killed the tourney. I like, got most most of the like, MVP, most games. I made the tournament team. And I was like waiting for a, a contract or, or, you know, offer from a club. And I didn't get anything. So I was like sort of gave up hope. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to go do fucking um, factory work or something. But yeah. the Warriors had, I saw the Warriors, they had an open trial. Didn't think I was going to make it. So me and my mates, we went and got on the piss the night before. And then we turned up to the open trial. Just had a crack. Me and a few of my mates, James Bell, played for the Warriors too. And then um, they told us to come to preseason. And it sort of all went from there. How oh, good. And you made the team. And then that team went on to win the grand final, beating the Broncos 34-32 after finishing the year in eighth. An unreal season. Can you tell us a bit about that year, bro? And what you remember from that grand final experience? Yeah, it was funny that because we actually played Jaden and um, Cody. They were playing for the Broncos. So it was weird how they all panned out. Um, yeah, it was a crazy finals run. I think we won a couple of games um, heading into the the, sem- or the semi-final and that we won like right on the bell. So, um, and to get into the finals, Mason had to kick it from the sideline. So it was a crazy run in, in, in that final series. Um, but the, yeah, the grand final, we were up 32-6, I think it was. And then they came... Oh, they, we were up 34-6, sorry. And they came back. And then the last couple of minutes, it was like 34-32. And, um, yeah, it was just... It was my first grand final I ever won, too. So, I mean, it was mad because Stacey Jones was our coach. So, yeah, it was a dream come true. Hopefully, we can do that uh, in the NRL team now. <laughs> sure, that's unreal. And the year later, you actually played for the Junior Kiwis as well. Was this your first taste of international footy? And how was that playing the Junior Kangaroos? Because I think a few of your tar- current teammates were in that team. Yeah, Lodgy and um, Ewan and that were, even Ash Taylor, I think, was the half. Um, but yeah, that was a crazy, crazy experience. It was my first year, like you said, international taste of international footy. And the experience was unreal. I was rubbing shoulders with a few of the boys that were playing great at the time. Um, so yeah, it was yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was a good experience. And the year after you actually made your NRL debut, round three against the storm at Mount Smart. How did you find out you're gonna make your debut and what do you remember about the game? Um, I don't remember too much to be honest. Um, but I do remember how I found out. I was sort of I did captain John with the, the cup team um in the morning. And then NRL sort of had a later captain drawn. So I was doing about to do some extras. Um, like as you do after training, everyone goes to their own extras. So I was doing mine. And Laurie Hale, our, our team manager, come over and called and said that I needed to go um, jump into the NRL's captain run. And I was sort of like annoyed because you don't want to do too much the day before a game. So I was like, oh, I'm going to have to run dummies and that, decoys and that for the boys. I'm sort of pissed off. But um, he goes, oh, by the way, Cappy wants to see you when, when, when you get over there. So I was like, oh, sweet. Jumped on the cart, took us over to the main field. And then um, Cappy was standing at the end of the field. He always just sort of stands there by himself. I ran over to him and he goes, how you going, Jazz? I was like, yeah, good. And he's like, mate, you're going to start tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, fuck, I already know I'm going to start playing cup. And then he goes, no, you silly C word. He goes, you're starting for us tomorrow. And I was like, what the fuck? Ah. 
my stomach just dropped and I was nervous as um, from there. And then sort of the boys, the boys were in a huddle and they called, I ran over to the boys and then I was just shaking there. I was real nervous. And then all the boys were cheering, cheering, patting me on the back. And then we just ran through training. Every pass, I swear to God, was to the ground, to the boys' <laughs> ankles and that, and I was just going, <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was unreal, yeah. But the game was mad because I ran out, man, smile. It was a home game. Um, it was our first home game of the year. Um, it was like Roger and Bully's first year, so the crowd was packed, ran out, and I could see Cam Smith across. I could see Jesse Bromwich, bro, and I was just like, all right, we made it. And was that like a welcome to the NRL moment for you? Or was there like a particular tackle in that game or something you remember where you were like, shit, I'm in first grade now? Yeah, the oh, yeah, the first the first couple of tackles, but there was one in particular. Uh, I sort of got an offload from Benny Matalino and then I like draw, drew in um, Kenny Bromwich and I passed it and he smoked, smoked my ribs and I was like wounded for ages. And then Hoppy was just like, Hop, oh, Ryan Hoffman came up to me. He was like, welcome to NRL, boy. <laughs> and I was just like, wow. Oh, please. Yeah. And uh, 2018, you cemented yourself a, a solid position in the 17, played some unreal footy, and that resulted in you being named the Interchange Player of the Year at the Daly M's. An unreal achievement. How was the experience <laughs> of the Daly M's and winning that award? Yeah, I wasn't, wasn't expecting it, um, to be honest. I sort of got invited to... The awards and I was just like oh fuck it I'll just go um it'd be a mad experience and I wanted to go because I, I sort of had a feeling that Roger was going to get you know everyone had a feeling because it was a crazy season from him yeah and then um when my name got called as you can see in the video if you if you watch the tape where I get called I was just in shock and in disbelief like I didn't know that it, you know I'd won it and then um it was the first time Mooks had let me like let my hair down like have a drink yeah too so I was, had I had a few beers and that and then Oh, it was crazy and then yeah Roger ended up getting his award and then um yeah me and Bully did that haka for him which was cool yeah. yeah that was sick and over the years since you've gone on to establish yourself as a constant name in the game day lineup playing multiple positions and many roles for the team what is your preferred position bro and do you prefer starting or coming off the bench um oh my per my preferred position is lock like I like playing lock in the middle there um well, I think I'm, I think I'm more effective coming off the bench, to be honest. Um, but lately, I've had to to start a few games because of injury. You know, Tohu's been out, Josh has been out. Um, I've worked really hard on my defence and discipline, and I think like now I've sort of got the hang of of starting. Um, I, I like starting now, but I do think personally, like after so Bangers, I think Bangers is back this week. But after he gets a few games under his belt, you know, I'll probably sort of slide back to the bench role. And I, I feel like that's where I'm better, more, more effective. Um, my footy's more effective. It's coming off the bench. And mentally, what's the main difference for you, bro? Do you have to change your mindset much based on if you're starting or coming off the bench? Um, no, 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 not, not really. You sort of just, you got to know when to spend your energy so you don't go too hard out in the warm-up because, you know, you'll be sitting on the bench for like another 20, 30 minutes. Um, but that's the main part, you know, is when you start, you sort of straighten the action. Um, but when you're on the bench, you've got to sort of sit there and wait. So when I'm sitting on the bench, I just try to look at like where they're a bit vulnerable through the middle, what players are sort of lazy or can't move that well laterally. Um, that's what I'm sort of looking at when I'm on the bench. Um, but when you start, everyone's fresh and it's a lot tougher, um, yeah, energy-wise. Yeah, nice. And you're known as an energetic and aggressive player who wears his heart on his sleeve. How do you find a balance <laughs> between that aggression and keeping a cool head? And is that a tough balance to find? Yeah, I think it took me a while to you know, get the hang of that. And um, I've sort of been working on my discipline a lot with Brownie and even Robbo helped me out at the end of the last year. Um, yeah, I sort of had to rein things in a bit. And it's not... It's not tucking my aggression away. It's just being a bit more disciplined and being a bit smarter. Um, I used to just go out there and get emotional or get emotional and get pissed off and then I'd be fired up and then give away a penalty or get sent off and it wasn't helping us win games. So, yeah, I had to rein that in a bit, be a bit smarter. Yeah, fair. And since the 2020 season, the boys have been located across the ditch. How have you find being based in Aussie, bro, away from your family? Yeah, I don't mind today. I like the lifestyle over here. It's a lot, um, I feel like it's a lot cleaner. Lifestyle, you know, Goldie is 
Well, when you come over here, you'll if you've already been there, you'll you'll love it, bro. It's just sunny real early in the morning. Get up, everyone's out walking or going for a run, going to the gym, get a coffee, go for a swim. Like I, I like that lifestyle, like you know, real clean. Um, as to you know, growing up in Southport, <laughs> go to the bakery, have a pie, fucking, yeah. you know, there's a big difference there. Um, but yeah, I don't mind it. I miss my family, I miss my dog a lot, I miss my mates, but yeah, I don't mind the lifestyle over here, bro. Yeah, nice. And talking about home, the boys will finally make the trip back to NZ this year and lace up for the first time at Mount Smart in three seasons. How excited are you to get back home and play in front of the Warriors faithful? Yeah, but I can't wait. It's been too long, eh? It's been too long. You know, we, we have a solid, solid support base over here, uh, especially in Redcliffe. You know, there's a lot of Kiwis there, but nothing beats running, at, running out at home. Um, it's been too long, three years. We haven't played there since 2019. So, um, yeah, can't wait to get home and, and run out and play in front of our fans. Hopefully we can, you know, just get a few, few, get a few more wins on the trot and then come home to, you know, um, sort of hit, leading into that uh, final series. Hopefully you can come home, yeah. And do you have a favourite Mount Smart moment or memory in your career so far? Oh, probably just my debut, bro, running out. And then, oh, playing in uh, the back end of 2018, like we sort of knew we were in the finals. Um, each game was just sold out and it was just, you know, like a packed house. And I, it was a mean experience. And, you know, hopefully we can, I can feel that feeling again. Um, yeah. One. And it's fair to say you're a fan favourite and a player that epitomises what it means to be a warrior. So what is it about the jersey that makes you go hundies every week, bro? Because no one can ever fault your effort every week. Yeah. Um, the word I like to use is, is mana. Just having, it, like, everyone's got mana in them. And it's just like, when I go out to play, like, I don't know, just, it's just one of those things, like, I'll, I'll keep going until, you know, I can't go anymore. Um you know, and that's probably been, probably haven't been fit enough at times to just keep going at that same pace. Um, but, you know, every time I go out there, I'll wear my heart on my sleeve and, you know, I'll never give up until the final. So. Unreal. And last year you re-signed with the club until the end of 2023, remaining a one-club player. Was this an easy decision for you? And what do you hope to achieve at the club over the next two seasons? Um, it, it was a, a bit of a messy decision, or not messy, but it, it was getting to the point where I was getting a bit frustrated, but I was happy to, to stay at the club because um, I love the Warriors and I don't want to play for any other team. Um, but, you know, this is a business, bro, and you, you know how fast things can change. So um, I was happy to get that deal done, and I just want I want nothing but success for this team, and um, I want to be a part of the first team to, you know, win, a, win my premiership. Um, and uh, I knew like Shawnee that was coming back, so it was a sort of a no-brainer. Um, hopefully, we can. We're in a bit of a slump right now, bro. But um, yeah, we need. We can turn things around, and I think getting back a few of our players like uh, Tohu coming back, Marcelo back in the team, um, Joshy not too far away. Once we have all our troops fully fit on the field, I feel like we can, uh, you know, do do some damage in the comp. Ah, that'll be hissing. And earlier this year, you represented the Maldives in the All-Star game. How was that experience, bro? Can you tell us a bit about the build-up and also that haka? Because every year it seems to get more and more hissing. Yeah, the boys, oh, I love doing the, I love doing the haka. I'll do a haka anytime I can. Um, but yeah, that experience was cool. I wanted I wanted to play that game for a while and I was finally, um, finally picked to play. So um, yeah, going against the Indigenous boys, like two proud cultures, um, you know, at the start of the season, two preseason game, and it's mad that there's unlimited changes. So you can just run on, go hard out, win your stuff, put your hand up, go home. <laughs> um, but yeah, the haka was was awesome. I loved doing the haka. Even the indigenous boys had a sort of mean uh, war dance that they did. Um, you know, get your adrenaline pumped, and yeah, it's, it's, it was a mad experience. Yeah. And on to last weekend, a tough loss against the strong shark side. What were the key learnings from that game? You think the boys will look to take into this weekend? Yeah, so we just did a review. It wasn't a pretty review. Um, you know, we, we should have won that game, especially when they had 11, 11, 11 players at one point. Um, I don't know. It was, it was our, our, our attack. I think we, we got a two, two trigger happy. Like, um, instead of sticking to our process and playing straight, we started running to the spaces and, yeah, we turned the ball over a lot um, in their half. Uh, I think we made like 200 and something 
or 100 and something more tackles than them in our red zone, yeah. uh, which didn't help. Um, but yeah, we know when we we're at our best, when we we're completing sets, building pressure, and then uh, our halves are playing straight um, and direct. And a big game this weekend, magic round against the Bunnies. Sold out Suncorp on the Saturday night. The place should be buzzing. Do the boys look forward to magic round? And what do you think will be the keys to getting the dub against Souths? Yeah, I think, um, well, magic round's a, a great occasion. Um, you know, all the teams playing at one one location. The the crowd, yeah, it is sold out. And the crowd's always packed um, at magic round. So it's going to be a good atmosphere to play in. Um, I think the key for us this week is just keeping it simple. Um, I think... When, we, when you look at us, when we played against the, the Broncos, we kept things real simple, and that was when we looked at our best. Um, keeping it our forwards, getting the ball in our forwards' hands, because look, we've got Matt Lodge and Adam Floor Blake, two of the best props in the game. Getting the ball in their hands and playing off the back of that, our halves playing nice, straight and direct. Um, building pressure, completing our sets. So, yeah, that's, I think, the key. Sounds good. And let's get on to some of the quick fire stuff now, a bit more casual. Who's the biggest joker or pest in the team? And I have to say, bro, your name has come up here every every one. Yeah. Oh, I love having a joke. I love taking the piss out of the boys. So either myself or, or Reese is a bit of a pest, you know, he's one of those guys that you 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 want to give him a slap in the face a couple of times, but you don't because he's the little baby of the team. So yeah, he's probably the one, he's probably the pest. I'm more of a joker, I think. Classic. And your go-to pre-game tunes, bro, to get you hyped? Um, so I sort of start off with reggae. I sort of like to mellow, relax. And then um, just before kickoff, I chuck on some 50 and then I'll play some of that. Yeah. Right there. And your favourite things to do outside of footy? Um, well, I like the beach. I love the beach. Um, favorite thing, hang out with my mates, have a beer with my mates. I love having a beer, but uh, yeah. <laughs> sort of got to, you know, pick pick the best time and place for that um but yeah I, I, i've really enjoyed uh just like getting a coffee early in the morning go for a walk along the beach um going for a swim in that the water's the water's so clear in that over here so yeah i'd probably say go beach yeah, nice and run it straight challenge who's the one warrior you'd least like to run it straight at um probably lodgy <laughs> he was hurting Probably on the weekend, weekend day. Eh? You should have seen him, yeah, in the weekend. But he's uh, he's been going. He's been probably his best last two games I've ever seen him play. Um, he's just made him like well, he's the enforcer of our team, and he's just picked one player out of each team that will come across and just decided, fuck it, I'm just going to go after this dude. So I think yeah, Lodgy would be the the one. Yeah, I felt sorry for Dale Finucane, that's for sure. And, uh, <laughs> if you're going to get stuck on a desert island with three other Warriors players, who would they be and why? Oh, um, Adam, probably my one of my best mates on the team. So probably go Adam just for a laugh. Um, who? Oh, uh, I'll probably go Sean for the brains. So oh. he could be the brains of us. No, nah, actually, no. Nah. Sean, Sean wouldn't survive on the island, bro. No way. You'd be too soft at both. <laughs> nah, I'll go. I, I have to go the island boys, like Kelly and, and, and Billy. Yeah. Just because they know, you know, grew up on an island. They know sort of a little bit of survival skills. So, <laughs> yes. we'll probably go those three. Sounds smart. And a few listener questions, bro. They've sent them in. First one comes from Jake Rutherford. He says, one player you'd love to play alongside in the NRL that you haven't yet? Oh, um... Probably Jake Trevorovich. You know, I sort of looked up. I've looked up to him for a while. Um, is is probably one of the best thirteens in the game. Um, so yeah, I'd love to to bang against him, bang with with him. Sorry, he's a beast. And Tim Hudson says, do you have any pre-game superstitions or routines? Uh I wear the same undies, same budgies, um, and I have spaghetti bolognese um, before. Or the night before a game, yeah, just my two pre solid feed. And Jace Taylor says, You're known for running hard and putting in some big shots. Is there a tackle or player in particular you can remember who put a massive shot on you? Uh, I remember it was my first year in grade. Um, Sam Burgess, I was standing at a, a defender, he got the ball sort of skipped out on the overs and then he stepped off his left foot and just ran straight at me, beelined it for me, and he bumped me off. And when he bumped me off, 
like I fell back on my ass. He stood like on my stomach. Oh. So he literally ran me over. So that's probably the worst experience I've ever had. Yeah, he was a beast. And Jay Smith says, what do you miss the most about New Zealand? Bakery pies. <laughs> oh, bro, I'm a, that's my weakness, right, is a bakery pie. Uh, I haven't had one of those for ages. Yeah, because the pies in Aussie aren't as good, eh? Bro, there's no pies here, bro. You yeah. go to the gas station, it's all like sausage rolls and shit. I'm like, bro, where's... It? And like, you go to the bakeries, it's all um, like, like cakes and shit, brownies and that. Not the no one. bloody meat pies, yeah. Not the one. And the Drew Signal says, if you could box anyone in the NRL, who would it be? Nathan Brown for sure, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll call him out too. I wanted because I want to do that fight. I want to do that fight. Um, yeah. I, I want to have a boxing match. Um, and I, I wanted to call him. I'll try to call him out because they were looking for fighters. And yeah. I called out Brownie on the um, on the on the post on Instagram and. His teammates were even taking him in, like, come on, fight your dog, like, fight your cat. And he didn't say anything, so. That'd be a good I think that ship sailed, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I love the way he plays in there. He's a good player. It sort of reminds me of myself, like, yeah. sort of similar way we play. But, yeah, I think that would be a good fight to watch. And the last one from Clarkie's Rugby League, and he says, do you have a preference to rep in the World Cup between the Kiwis and Samoa? Um, I want to play for New Zealand, bro. Like, I, I, that's one of my goals. Um, but you know, I do want to as well. At the same time, I want um, to sort of flip the like how Tonga have with, with their their country. Like, you know, they get all the stars in that back. So, I want to grow the Tosa more team and have uh, them have a strong side um, and have a red hot crack at the World Cup. But I still want to play for the Kiwis. Uh, so I'm going for the Kiwis this year, but if I don't get selected, then hopefully if I'm good enough to make the uh, Tour Samoa team as well. Yeah, that sounds sick. And that's it from me, bro. Thanks for jumping on. Been unreal to have a yarn with you and excited to watch you rip in this weekend. So go well and up the wires. All good, brother. I'll see you on uh, Wednesday. <laughs>